a little bit about where we're going to go with this. Um, so you folks have been commenting up on those post-its. Thanks for everyone for your, your wise thoughts. Um, we'll have a little bit of a, a presentation from Jillian in a minute of the themes from those, uh, from those post-its. So myself and Maria had a crack at, at theming them and, uh, and re-theming them. And uh, I think that'll be a bit of a jumping off point for, for some discussion. And we'll invite the other members of the planning team up here after that uh, to pose a few questions and then open it to the floor for some, some final thoughts and some final uh, reflections, questions, those kind of things. Uh, and then uh, the other thing I want to mention is that uh, you will not be released from this room without placing yourself in a circle. Uh, and I'll tell you a little bit about that. Um, so I think as part of building the structure for next steps, the ask is that you all reflect and maybe think as we, we have this conversation here for the next hour or so um, about kind of where you sit in a circle like this. Um, so I think many of us have seen these kind of circles before in terms of collective action, right? Um, coming out of this and thinking about building and, and, and sustaining a regional network, where do you want to land? Are you, are you all in on this? Is this something you'd like to help organize and build and, and facilitate? Pop your name in the I'm in circle. Uh, are you a call me if you need me person? Uh, and if so, pop your name in there. Or are you keep me in the loop person? Your, your cup might be full right now, but you'd like to know what's happening. And so the ask for all of you uh, before you leave this room is to visit one of the tables in the back. So there's a giant version of those circles in the back corner and a couple of smaller versions along the back. And just sign your name into one of those circles if you're comfortable. And uh, no need to put your contact information. The organizers have it if you registered for this. So maybe just as we, as we talk for the next hour or so, maybe have a think about which one of those circles you, you land in. We'll remind you one more time before this all winds up, if that's all right. So um, yeah, that's, the, that's the, our ask of you. I'll now uh, welcome Jillian up to walk through some reflections on some of the, the key questions. So Jillian, it's already up to the first one for you, and I will hand over the mic. And do I, do I do that? Yeah, you can advance it with that. I might, don't go too far. All right. <laughs> uh, so I'm also the same on myself. I will drag myself off if I go more than 10 minutes. Um, so now I just gotta get my broken phone to work. One thing about me is, um, I lose things a lot, and so I haven't been wearing my glasses much because the only pair that uh, aren't broken or aren't in Alberta are like this, and so like you're all shaded right now, but I need them, so <laughs> this is my look. Uh, so as you recall, there were five questions, and I don't do well with written notes, so I'm just gonna go off the bullets. The first question was, how can students in the general public gain more awareness of local food, have increased access to local food, and become more engaged in where it comes from? And so we're gonna, we've got a lot of raw notes, but there were two themes that Josh and Maria uh, pulled together out of that, and the first was creating opportunities for experiential learning and sharing. We heard that coming up in some of the themes in the panel, so it's a great summary. And the second is making the food system as transparent and visible as possible at every step of the process. So again, you know, I, I've heard some of this coming up already, so this it's aligned with what we're hearing. And again, with these questions, they're going to help us in our post-dig-in world with figuring out, are we developing a blueprint? Like, are we developing a map of what we need to do? So it's been great to get this information from you. Let's see, I'm a technological Luddite. Yeah, it's click it and wait, it'll do it. Is it upside, I have it upside down, don't I? I do, one moment, let's turn it around the other way and point it, ha ha, still don't go anywhere. Uh, the second question, what programs, policy, infrastructure and practices will help the most to effectively and quickly expand our regional food systems? And here there were four themes. One would be building to enable local procurement, food hubs, processing storage, and school, um, school food, which our panel 4B was just talking about. The second is retooling funding and regulatory systems. The third was facilitating land access for new ent entrants. And the fourth was around grassroots organizing and citizen particip participation uh, enables it all. So getting people the access and the ability to get involved. 
Oh, I'm, I'm in. I'm, I got you. You can go sit down. You're done, Josh. Um, <laughs> don't go too far. Uh, how can we best encourage and support underrepresented groups uh, within our food system? And here we had three themes. One was prioritize bringing the voices of migrant and temporary workers and other marginalized folks into dialogues like this. Maria, that sounds a little familiar to us. Uh, focus on centering without tokenizing the perspective of diverse voices when we are setting the direction of this movement. And the third is to bring real resources to the table to support this work through inclusive hiring practices and pathways to pay folks with lived experience for their time and their knowledge. So somebody in the back has put theirself in the middle of the concentric circle, I see. Excellent. Uh, the next question was, what do you envision for an Atlantic network of food system stakeholders? How would this network help with your own work? We have three here. The first is full Atlantic regional reach while empowering decentralized local action. The second, inclusive and community-driven vision. And then the third, providing both leadership and tangible supports to grassroots organizations. And I think this is the last one. Yay, okay, we're on it. As a consumer, what is your greatest challenge in inquiring local food? What would overcome that obstacle? And here we have four themes. Year-round accessibility and availability remain a challenge still. Systemic distortions affecting the price of food. The third is opportunities to build thriving systems for access to cultural foods. And the final is a stronger social safety net would let producers and processors thrive. And so with those, thank you for those amazing thoughts. Uh, what brings me a bit of hope is that this is not new stuff for any of us here. So we are, uh, we're moving, we're digging in, in the right direction. Over to you, Josh. Thank you so much, Jillian. Uh, so if I could get other members of the organizing team to grab a chair, stool, spot up here, uh, and we'll throw a few questions at you to spark a little bit of final conversation. So Joe, if you want to come up, and Leanne, and Justin, Bob, Phil, and Linda too, sorry. Yeah. We have many seating options here with varying levels of danger, so uh, <laughs> take your pick. <laughs> That's a load-bearing Justin right over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bob, you want to slide in? There's one more spot up there and one more, a couple more in here. I'm going to slide this out of the way. And for the folks on the live stream, I'm probably heading out of frame, so I'll just be the disembodied question asking voice, which we're here for. We can do this. So uh, there's a bunch of us here. We don't necessarily all have to, ref to reflect on every question, but uh, I'm going to ask one that, that I would love to hear from everybody on is just thinking about what you just heard. What gives you hope? Uh, and maybe I'll go to Joe first. Um, oh, and let's get some mics going. Yes. Thank you. Uh, from a perspective of hope, being a farmer, we've had the pleasure and the opportunity of uh, hiring employees. And uh, in the process of doing so, uh, we have had some very uh, young, extremely intelligent, driven, and I would say very uh, visionary people. And so many things uh, I've experienced over the last <laughs> several decades cause one to question that. But I have to say specifically the energy, the intelligence, um, and I think the focus that I see coming from the younger generation gives me a great deal of hope. And by the participation that I've seen here and some of the most intelligent statements I've heard have come from some of the youngest people in the room. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to go a little bit philosophical for a minute. That's what I do. That's what I get paid for. No. 
Um, I have a background in ecology before I actually started doing stuff um, professionally, but uh, I still use ecological themes to, to frame a lot of the way that I think. And there's a concept in ecology called emergent properties, things that come out of complex systems. Um, in in well-organized ecosystems that are taken care of um, or allowed to thrive on their own, they're adaptable, diverse, resilient. Um, and that's what I'm seeing in these suggestions and these themes. And that's an emergent property of what happens when you get this many brilliant, beautiful minds and hearts in a room. And it's been a long time since we've been able to do this. And I think that's what gives me the most hope is this sort of blueprint that's emerging that came out of the minds and hearts of everybody who made the time to be here today. So thank you. Thank you for the philosophical introduction. <laughs> What did I hope when I was coming here or what, what is now? my hope as I'm going yeah. forward? My hope is that the way we have come together here from very young to uh, slightly older uh, means that we are preparing ourselves at this particular, I think this is an inflection point, I think what has been happening globally for the last little while is making us aware of the need. So I am hopeful that we will carry this forward and that those, those uh, circles will be filled in and that Nova Scotia will become, along with the other Amer um, uh, Atlantic provinces, what it needs to be for all of us and for the rest of the world going forward. Well, I, I touched on this uh, subject about an hour ago at one of the table talks and uh, was reflecting back to uh, my youth when I was back part of the back to the land movement. And the motivation for many of us then was what I term blows against the empire. Like we just wanted to move far out to the countryside, uh, have a subsistence farm, raise a family. And we met with so much resistance uh, at every level that, and there was nobody to teach us how to farm organically. We had to teach each other. And uh, what I'm seeing here is, and, and as a result, a lot of us threw in the towel and went back to destroying the planet, you know? Um, what I see here is that uh, people are, you know, have learned to collaborate with partners rather than compete with rivals. And, uh, and my concern coming here actually was that I was hopeful that nobody was trying to create some kind of system that was gonna compete with Cisco or try to take over Atlantic Canada food system. But what I see is lots of small community, neighborhood, regional things with people that are knowledgeable and not just idealistic, but actually know how to do things and are coordinating with people. And it, it gives me lots of hope that we could actually, uh, we could actually make it. Um, what's giving me hope is that, like when running through the list of what people answer to the questions, um, n not surprising um, based on the, the conversations we've had this weekend. So I'm feeling some hope in that there's been consistency in what's been presented and consistency in what people are taking away. Um, and, you know, these are themes that I'm hearing in meetings that I'm a part of. I'm sure there a lot of the themes are ones you've heard in meetings that you've been a part of. So it tells me that we're on the same page and that we are aiming to move in the same direction. Um, and what's giving me hope is like the, there's been a lot of beautiful networking happening here in the room. There's been a lot of, um, people that have been, um, there's been a, a lot of people that have been sharing, not just sharing contact information, but I'm overhearing 
people willing to share the resources that they've built, willing to share from the experiences of things that they've tried, willing to share about failures as well. And um, that gives me a lot of hope that we can work together to move the needle. There was a phrase that <clears throat> stuck in my mind today from Dan Rubin, and I think, Dan, it came from your father. <laughs> when you see the need, you do the deed, okay? So the organizing team here, Dawn, I'm glad you could join in. Thought you could hide in the audience. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> we saw the need, and we did the deed for this summit. <laughs> and what... What gives me hope is everybody here in this room, you see the need and you're doing the deed. So let's keep doing it. Hey John, what gives you hope? Well, I was hoping I didn't get spotted, but that didn't work. Um, they had asked me to come up earlier and I said, if, if there's space, I will, but I don't have to because I feel like I've been on the spotlight a lot this weekend. But what gives me hope um, for myself, um, the first meeting I had with these folks and we were talking about the conference was it would have been, well, at least a year and a half, right? My first meeting with them was me and my COO, Christopher Gugu, and our operational manager, Vanessa Lilly. And then next thing you know, the first time we're all there together. The next time it's me and Vanessa. <laughs> and then the next one, it's, it's Dawn. So being new in my position, being new to this group and seeing what we've accomplished, and I don't mean just us, because if it wasn't for your guys' dedication, this wouldn't have been successful. It would have been a, a, a panel. We're sitting here instead of Zoom, it would have been in person. So I guess even with me being um, a beginner or a newbie in my role, what gives me hope is I see all my concerns and all my concerns for our communities are reflected in you. And I think our voice works better in numbers. So I just wanna say thank you for coming and making me feel like, okay, people got my back. I'm going to throw one more question to the, the folks up here and then we'll open it to the room. But I, I think having thought about it at that level, I kind of want to bring it down to the ground for a second and just think like, what's the, what's the immediate next step that you see coming out of this? Like what, what do we do tomorrow or next week? Like sometime with it, coming right out of this energy that we're all feeling and have articulated. And maybe Bob, do you want to start, start the line on this one? I'm not on the mic. All right. Great. There we go. Um, immediately out of this? Yeah, what's the next step? Well, um, take a long rest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. And then I think the next thing is we're gonna look at those three circles. And that's really what this whole thing hangs on is where those names land. And I'm convinced that this is gonna be good. Um, what's next? I mean, I, I, I live in this space all the time of like building networks and supporting networks and getting people talking. So let's not stop the conversation, but can we, can we do better than that? Can we actually start to take some action? I would love to see, I would love to see some working groups come together around some of these themes so that we can actually like, yeah, just go, go from, go from the spot where we see the challenges and the obstacles to starting to bring together some of the solutions and, and really get the message out there. Uh, I'll ad, ad lib the uh, quote from Margaret Mead that said uh, <laughs> something to the effect that never doubt that a small group of people could change the world. Yeah. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. Mm -hmm. So get out of your chairs and just do it. Um, <clears throat> I might not have another chance to say this, so uh, thank you 
to the organizing committee, every last one of you. And I think Desiree um, perhaps is not here. Um, oh. Oh. <laughs> Since you're supposed to be up here as well, <laughs> I ratted you out as well. <laughs> I, I also, um, I'm glad that I suggested to Bob the DeBert Center, because I think this has served us extraordinarily well, and the chefs and people who have helped find. And so I, if they can all hear. And um, next step for me is I have to go home and start working on a FarmWorks offering document. So I'll just throw in that little um, ad there. Next up, keep on bringing our, keep on keeping together. And, and as I said earlier, everybody working together is going to get us where we need to go. Walk the walk. We talk the talk, let's walk the walk. How did you not do that last night when we had to go get a garbage can to be the drum? <laughs> That's helpful. Um, yeah, well, I guess the spotlight's on on the organizers. We can't forget that this gentleman right here who came all the way from Newfoundland uh, has also played an incredibly important role uh, in making this all happen. So just a quick round of applause for Josh. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to make sure that we don't, like this is, this is real inertia here. Let's not let it atrophy. I think those are words that you once said, Josh, when we were meeting uh, back in the midst of the pandemic and the Atlantic Food Vision was first taking form. Don't let the inertia atrophy. We're just getting started. Linda, you mentioned this point of inflection. Um, I think we're, we're at a massive turning point. And one thing that I thought was so great about Philip's uh, opening remarks were um, to be frame this as a yes. Um, I've spent enough time on a soapbox saying, stop doing bad things. And people are like, get out of here. <laughs> this is a yes movement. Yes to abundance. Yes to resilience. Yes to thriving. Yes to community. Um, we have something very special here that we can now take out into the world. I want this to be a yes movement. I want us to plaster stickers on restaurants and build a movement of uni unity that we're all feeling connected to the land again and responsible. And yeah. Say yes. Awesome. That's a tough act. That's a tough act to follow. The uh, <laughs> so no wonder I'm batting last. Uh, <laughs> so I would say this is literally a marathon, and the way you do that is you do it one step at a time. It's not the 26 plus. It's just one step at a time. We need small successes as we start, but we need to succeed and we need to start. If I might offer like maybe the most ground level reflection of them all on next steps is find some money to do this. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, like, we need the dollars because I, I think it's, it's worth reflecting on the fact that kind of by design, our system is broken up into provinces in a way that makes this kind of work challenging, right? Uh, like uh, many of us live in provincial ecosystems where resourcing collaboration that cuts across provinces is not something that has a bucket to land in. And so like lots of this work has happened on the corner of, of our desks uh, and, and others in this room, right? Um, so I think like that's where I'm thinking is that to maybe make, this is a great foundation for having a conversation with the folks who, who can support it. So that, cause there's a, there's a lot of work to do, right? And that work should be paid and it should be paid well. And so just thinking about how that happens is where my head's going right now. That's maybe uh, because I spend my entire day every day thinking about that kind of stuff. But uh, you know, I, I think we're at the point where we can make a case now for the value of this work and this, this circle that is growing here. So uh, 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 that's my maybe immediate next step is start 
starting to think a little bit about where that lands. So uh, I think we that's enough of panel question time. Um, do we have some floating mics? Otherwise, I can steal it. You can run one around. Uh, you have, you have a question. There's a question here, and there's a mic coming. Excellent. Thank you. Also, wonderful volunteers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, you, you folks have been such an amazing crew. Everything just magically happens. It is wonderful. Thank you all. Can all the volunteers raise your hand, stand up, that are in the room? Yeah. 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 And, and and while we're at it, um, is Andrea in the room? Okay, I wanna I wanna point out Jillian for sure. And most of you probably met Andrea along the way. Incredible level of detail. I mean, honestly, we figured we probably have at least a hundred lists, you know. And then the, then when you get into the list of the lists you know, that kind of thing. And then also Dale at the at the front desk to recognize that. So we have now about 25 minutes on the clock for questions and reflections. So uh, I see one up here, go for it. Yeah, uh, just something I'd like to offer, um, actually inspired by this guy here from Food, Food First, um, just to wrap, <laughs> Food producers form. Food producers form. Okay. I knew it was Newfoundland. Yeah. I do like jobs. Okay. <laughs> um, just around, you know, the involvement of students. And one of the themes up here was experiential learning. Um, anybody that works with a project that needs uh, extra, you know, people resources and maybe don't have the funding to hire those, please do take advantage of students that really need real experiential learning. And as somebody who spent my whole life in academia, most of my classes are so theoretical. I'm reading other work published nine years ago. And if we could actually work on a real project and you know, go on Google, look up a university, find a prof and email them directly. Be like, I have this project. Is there a way you can incorporate that into your class next semester? And people are really hungry for that. So um, just wanted to throw that out there. Oh, we have the offerings are growing. All right, here we go. Uh, yeah, I think there we go. Uh, oh. uh, thanks. Um, so thank you so much. This has been wonderfully energizing. And I'm looking at Josh with some embarrassment because I think I've not made it to about three meetings that he's convened over Zoom. <laughs> and I still, after three days here, haven't really connected for a very good one-on-one. -on -one. But um, I guess I wanted to just raise like a, a tiny bit of caution, but also an opportunity related to the first question that I saw up there, which which really highlighted the, the work around schools and education. Um, so I'm the executive director at Nourish Nova Scotia. Um, Food First uh, no, NB, Food for All NB is very involved in that work. Um, uh, as executive director at, at Nourish Nova Scotia, there's times when like, there are so many overlapping networks already working on school food that literally my entire week could be spent trying to choose which of those overlapping network meetings I participate in. So there's the Coalition for Healthy uh, School Food, which is very active. Um, I know that there's some Farm to Cafeteria Canada coordinators in this room. Um, and then at the level of our nonprofit organization, you know, we have we have a board of directors, we have we have four different working committees. And so I guess I just, I ask the question to this room, like, do, is there something additional that you're going to offer to the school food work or should you, or should we, yeah, is there something additional that you're, that you're going to offer to the school food, food work? Um, or can you just be supportive? Can you be a place where we can connect in when we actually need the specific local community food mentors and experiential uh, opportunities to connect to the education system. Because right now, as a nonprofit that works alongside the education system, but not directly in the education system, we can actually struggle even as a 10-year established nonprofit 
to have full, like to have access and to have engagement. So we just had a first meeting with like the nutritionists working in the health promoting schools and, and healthy school community teams. Um, we, we, we located it right next door to here so that a, a several of us could come to this conference after that. But it was the first time we'd been able to gather with those folks who actually work in the education system in three years. And there's, there's so much work to do and, 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 uh, and a lot of it eventually gets down to the ground. You need to have somebody close physically to a school who either wants to take over the cafeteria, is ready to be the, the community champion of the school garden, you know, eventually it, it gets down to the ground, but at the system level, there's like a lot of overlapping conversations that can, and I'm looking at Genevieve nodding, <laughs> like, so yeah, it, there's, a, there's a lot of overlapping conversations that were already being asked to show up to that um, kind of completely populate my agenda. So th thank you for that. Any reflections uh, from here? I'm kind of looking at you, Leanne, because you're you're probably the, the one who's closest to this work. So go for it. <laughs> Is it on? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah so um, that's it's a really important question. And so, Food for All New Brunswick is. Um, focused obviously on New Brunswick. It's in our name, um, <laughs> but we have um, really put a lot of attention into building up. Uh, a couple of things that will help people be able to find people so that they can work together. Um, so we have a, um, a resource hub that is made, like it's all full of resources, a few of them made by Food for All MB, but we would rather be able to um, promote existing resources than spend time on re trying to reinvent the wheel. And, and, and so what we, um, we have a resource hub there with all different kinds of topics related to food security, food sovereignty, food and climate, food justice, um, the list goes on and on. And so in there are things that are, you know, articles that are helpful, toolkits, um, just any, things to, to get people started on their journey of understanding or, or action. Um, the other thing that we have is a because we had this same challenge in New, in New Brunswick where we knew there was a lot of school food actors and a lot of like, people championing for more healthy food in schools, but that we were seeing like, not just duplication of work, but like six times, you know, there were a lot of people doing a lot of similar things and struggling to get those things done. And so we were part of a project called Who's Who in the School Food Zoo. And really it was just about tr trying to identify the, the actors and get them to start talking to one another, be willing to share their contact information, be willing to share their resources with one another. And that's resulted in a school food landing page. So I share that because um, we're, able, we're doing that in New Brunswick. Um, that's easily replicable, um, but also, you know, I think we have an opportunity to um, have some sort of central place where um, we could be doing, um, I'm not going to, I'm saying we like we here in this room, <laughs> I'm not going to be making any commitments, but um, to have one sort of hub for Atlantic Canada. I know that our, our, our resource map or our uh, resource directory is definitely, we, we would love to include some of the resources that you all have and share those out so that they can, that other people can try the things you've tried and, uh, and we can spread that information. Thanks, Leanne, and thanks. That's well, well said and well heard, I think. That's one of the things to flag and navigate as we go forward. Also, our individual provincial contexts are different in terms of whether there is like a systems organization doing the thing 
or not, and thinking about where where there are gaps and where there aren't, not accidentally doubling where there aren't gaps is 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 super important. That's a great thought. Uh, I saw some other reflections going around. I think, so. uh, yeah, right in the back there. Go for it. So I wanted to jump on the mic to second what the first person who spoke, who I I didn't see who they were, uh, was saying about uh, sort of like student labor and stuff like that, um, and uh, do my brother's job for a moment. Uh, <laughs> I'm a WOOF host. Uh, WOOF stands for Willing Workers on Organic Farms. It's a national uh, uh, organization that connects people who would like to uh, contribute to um, organic, doesn't necessarily have to be certified organic, but organic-minded farms um, and uh, people who have uh, farms um, and, and need support. Um, often it's people who are traveling and who are looking for a more affordable way to travel um, and they get uh, room and board um, cover uh, and in exchange for 25 to 30 hours contribution to the farm. Um, uh, it's, it's a, it's a international idea. There's, there's Wolf France, there's Wolf, there's Wolf all over the world. Um, and it's a really amazing program that I'm, uh, get to be a part of that I, I'm very, uh, gratefully a part of. I've had incredible, <laughs> incredible experiences with it. Uh, I say my brother's job because my brother is actually the communications manager for Wolf Canada. <laughs> um, so hopefully he somehow knows that I'm talking about him and he's proud of me. Um, I just wanted to, yeah, I encourage you all to, especially farmers to like take advantage of, of these programs that are out there. Um, Wolf specifically is in a bit of an organizational shift where they want to refocus on education. They want to make sure that it's not just a labor exchange program, that it really is people who want to learn more about our food system and our, and our farming and our, and our um, uh, you know, where our food comes from and, and farmers who really want to share that information, farmers who aren't just looking for somebody to come and, and weed their field, farmers who actually want to teach and share uh, their experiences and their knowledge with other people. Um, and I think that's a great opportunity because for a lot of people who who don't know these conversations are happening, who have never been in these rooms, who have never been to a farm, who have never been exposed to the problems with our food systems and, and also the opportunities with our food systems, it starts with that first touch. And um, when people who are not a part of, of this conversation have that opportunity to learn that these conversations are happening and, and that food systems are, are a beautiful thing and also a thing that needs changing. Um, we get more people in this room who are really passionate about doing exactly what everybody and all you guys are, are doing today. So I just wanted to put a little plug for Wolf Canada and, and for anybody who doesn't know about it, hopefully you check it out. Plug accepted, thank you. And before we move to the next question, uh, I, I, I was thinking, oh, there's all these great thoughts coming out here. I wonder how I'm gonna get them down. And then I realized we didn't thank Julia, who is doing those. So Julia, Julia is an old friend to lots of us in this room and a new friend to everyone else. Uh, but thank you, Julia, for doing such an amazing job. And I, I please everybody, like, go by and reflect on this, uh, on the work of art on the wall before the end of... Singing. And you're singing. And you're cello playing. You contain multitudes. Uh, <laughs> so thank you again. Uh, there are definitely a few more offerings uh, being offered. I think one in the back corner here. So, oh, Kimberly, hi. Oh, there it goes. So uh, earlier, and I can't even remember which because the days are just a blur now, but earlier it was brought up about um, some of the other Atlantic provinces that are working on fish as food and connecting it to schools. So obviously I'd like to connect with those groups that are working on that in the other Atlantic provinces. So um, I don't know if Josh, if you guys have that information at Food First, or if someone in this room has that information, I definitely would like to get my hands on it. Um, so in addition, if anybody out there knows any other groups in Atlantic Canada that are working on that, um, please let me know. And then also, I was wondering about, oh, Kimberly with Fishing for Success, sorry. Forget that. Um, and then also, I was wondering if any of the farmers here uh, volunteer for agriculture in the classroom or little green thumbs if you're using that as your 
entry point into the classroom to mold little minds um, because that's uh, <laughs> definitely a way to to help there too. And we don't have a national program like that for fishing. Uh, so that is something that would really be lovely to sort of try to push forward. So thank you. Thanks, Kimberly. And I, I think it's, uh, you know, this come up a few times and, and I think in the context, remember when we were drafting the, the food vision, I think like as something that needs much more work is integrating thinking about the fishery to thinking about uh, food systems in the way that we have this few weekends. I, I think some of us feel like the fisheries is a world that we don't know enough about to say anything about. Uh, and, you know, that's that's on a lot of us to change. So that's that's well flagged. Uh, other offerings. Oh, I see one in the corner. Samantha. It's really fast. It's also on the opportunities for students in education, because again, they're an amazing resource, but it's also to do with integrating municipalities. So for any municipalities here, the city studio system. So this is getting normally university students who are then going to take a problem that's within your city and deal with it for you. Come up with either a policy action or something like that, that is gonna make hopefully a really big difference. So I've been a student that did that. I am now on the other side of that pro program where I am now the city that is trying to get our answers from students and it's fantastic. Like it's, you're getting so many different ideas and I just wanna share that. So if you live in a city or yeah, if you live in a city, tell your municipality that you wanna see this happen. And if you live near a university, it makes it even easier. So yeah, uh, it's a, the city studio program is what it's called for us. Um, it can be called many different things. It's just relationships between universities, colleges, anything like that with a municipality where um, ideas are made. I don't know. Love it. Okay. And Samantha, can people reach out to you at the city of Cornerbrook or yes. to Rosa? Is it still Rosa? Yep. Uh, well, there's lots of, there's now three different programs. So um, this municipality that I work with, um, we have programs within the business management program, environment and sustainability, and... Another one that I can't remember right now, but um, yeah, hundred percent reach out to me if you have any questions. Um, my name's Samantha and you'll find me somewhere. Okay. <laughs> well offered. Thank you, Samantha. Anyone else with final thoughts offerings? Yeah, there's one in the back, go for it. This is super quick. Maybe you already all know this. So apologies if this is repeating information, um, but there is an open questionnaire right now, uh, the Pan-Canadian consultation for a national school food policy. Um, so please just Google that and put everything that we said here into the, your answer to that questionnaire. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, a pan-Canadian consultation on a school food policy. And, and while we're on the topic of surveys, uh, Miriam in the back, I called her out earlier. She's standing up. Um, she wants to talk with anybody that's a producer or a processor. So please uh, connect with Miriam. Uh, so hello, my name is Miriam. I'm a, I'm a postdoctoral research fellow at Dalhousie University. And I'm actually looking for producers, so anyone who owns a farm um, or a processor who owns a, a business in the Atlantic region, uh, to please come up and talk to me about the study, and I'll be more than happy to share all the information with you. Thanks. Thank you, Miriam. All these things to do. All right, I think we have another uh, reflection in the back. Go for it. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Stacy Gomez. I'm with uh, No One Is Illegal Nova Scotia Migrant Workers Program, and I, I guess my offering is, uh, it's, you know, uh, migrant workers came up in our conversation. It would be great if there's a summit in the future to have this as actually part of the agenda uh, to invite migrant workers to be part of this conversation. <laughs> Um, and my offering is, um, I would love, to, I'm happy to do like a follow-up workshop online uh, to talk about the work that we're doing. We work with migrant farm and seafood processing workers throughout the province. We also uh, have partnerships with uh, similar organizations in New Brunswick and on PEI. Um, so yeah, happy to do that. Uh, yeah, I think that's it for me. Thanks. Thank you so much. 
anyone else with a question, reflection, offering? I think I saw a couple more hands up. Ooh, there's one, Dan Rubin. And then we'll go over here after. I've had lots of opportunity to speak, so I'll try and make this really quick, Josh. Um, just some general reflections. One is that the devil is in the details. And while boiling down the things from the sheets is great because it makes them comprehensive and inclusive, we all know that it's going to come down to details. And what works with details are the three Ps, which are passion, partnership, and perseverance. So my insight, the thing that I've learned by being here is that there's all these people working on bits and the relief, the hope is that, ah, we don't all have to do it all. We can just do our part really well and we'll learn as we go about what critical little differences make the difference in those details between success and <laughs> <laughs> and then we can share those with each other through this kind of network, thanks to the networking that these wonderful people have created. And so I'll close with this. Uh, apparently, a British reporter interviewed Gandhi in the Salt March on the Way to the Sea. And they asked him, Mahatma, you've lived in South Africa, you were educated in England, now you're in India. What do you think of Western civilization? And Gandhi paused and he said, it would be a really good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Uh, wise words about next steps. And I think there was a reflection over here. Maria. Oh, yeah. So again, connecting a couple of uh, seemingly unrelated dots, but they're not unrelated. Uh, we were thinking about money, and Catherine was speaking about advocacy. Okay, timing wise, there is money for things that happen with more than one province and how, if anywhere, we can influence creating some opportunities there. So uh, the um, agriculture, uh, agriculture policy framework, the big envelope that funds most of agriculture policy, it's about to end, a new one is beginning. Uh, March 2023 and consultations are open. So more, mostly what happened with these consultations is as people you know, uh, talk about trials and tribulations and needs and then they get, um, I don't know, put somewhere, but, and some people are very, very um, actively lobbying and have structures to do so about how, what goes into these programs and how they are designed. And those people have the ear of ministers and deputy ministers. And if you go to the lobbying registry, which is open, thanks to open government open data and things like that, you will see who those people are. But uh, so an opportunity to, to help shape some of that, those programs could come through advocacy. And they, if the programs are shaped such way that they work for us, well, that would be good, but uh, then we, it won't happen if we just don't do the advocacy part. Uh, and uh, again, uh, they're asking specific questions on these consultations and I just uh, love them. And one of them is, how can we enhance supply, supply change resilience to reduce vulnerability, strengthen our competitiveness and improve local food system and domestic trade? So there's, we fit there. Teed it right up. <laughs> Thank you, Maria. We have to start now. Thank you. I think we have time probably for one more if anyone else has something that they'd like to share. Uh, there's a hand in the back. Hello, thank you. Um, my name is Ashlyn Brownell and I'm a farm worker. Um, and I just wanted to speak on the accessibility of these conversations, um, the accessibility and the barriers to coming to this conference as well and to being part of the conversation. I think we've had a lot of great um, 
things come out of the general discussions and everything, but I think that the conversation could be very different if other voices were included and if farm laborers and migrant workers and more farmers and producers were part of the conversation. Thank you. And I think if you look at what's came through in the notes and, and, and what ran through the theme of so many of the conversations we have this weekend, it's exactly that, right? It's how, how to broaden the circle in a meaningful way. Uh, so I think that's actually the perfect kind of closing thought to leave this, this circle with. Uh, so thanks, everybody. Thanks for your reflections and uh, your hope and, and your thoughts. I'm going to hand this show back over to Bob to, to bring us home and to welcome Mike, Joe Mike back. And uh, but I think before we do that, Bob has a few things for the room. So Bob, thank and thank you, Bob, for uh, ma making this happen. Oh yeah, and uh, yes, we can, uh, we can flee the stage now, friends. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Hey. All right. Um, where's Dawn? Oh, come here, Dawn. There you are. All right. Okay. We're going to do the raffle. Oh, all right. All right. We're going to do the raffle for the last two boxes here. Okay. Um, we need the tickets. We got the tickets. Right here. Okay. I'm going to hold the tickets. First one is the holiday sharing box. It's worth $125. And there's a picture with all the goodies in there that you probably looked at. So, no. I want to pick up my Christmas gift. Holiday goodies. <laughs> all right, dig deep in there. Dig deep. Yeah. Who's got 50 bucks? I'll fake read the name. <laughs> okay. What do you got? Do uh, I call her? Go ahead. Oh, I call her. Do you want to call? Okay. Yeah. I think that just adds to the suspense, right? <laughs> All right. See if your phone like rings. <laughs> well, you should have put on vibrate. <laughs> Bob, I found some stars at the show here for you. All right. Oh, I don't know who we're talking about. Just, come on up, you guys. Who's buzzing? Congratulations. <laughs> 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 Okay, before we do the last one, I want to introduce Quincy, the head chef. And and also Thomas, the customer service and facility manager. And, and as I understand it, this is one of the biggest events you've done here. Is that correct? Uh, okay. I, I would say the, the file for this event is probably the size of, probably the size of a phone book now. So. Yeah. <laughs> it was a big one. They've been fantastic to work with, so I want to recommend them if you're doing any of that. Okay, there's also, there's more thanks to come, the tech team. Okay, I want to thank Art, and Art, you've had somebody with you who I never even, I didn't get the name. Flo. 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 Okay. Flo. Uh, 
And so if you could thank the two of them with all the tech here. And so everything's been recorded and it's all gonna get uploaded. I'm not gonna promise exactly when, but it's all gonna get uploaded and you'll all find out. And there's also been a few people off site. Um, Ethan Neville, who's our photographer, he's not here right now. I wanna thank him. Also, Melissa Fillmore, who's been in the back um, not here, but in the shadows, managing the Zoom, managing all the virtual participants. I think we had about 35 or so people that have been listening from all over the place, Ontario and the whole Atlantic Canada and, and everywhere else. So I, it's a lot more people that we want to thank. And there's a few other volunteers, Jose and uh, there's probably some others that I should be thanking. The names don't come to mind. So we've had quite a crew. There's probably been 12 people plugging in at all kinds of different aspects to put this whole thing together. So this is the last one. This is the big one, the advent calendar. Okay, so I think they're individually wrapped gifts for every day of the advent. Okay, value of $175. So. Turn your phones on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. It's, you, it's too small. Almost too small. Well, I wanna make sure I mix it up, right? Anybody wanna add the last ticket? Okay, she's got one. Get her arms. <laughs> Last two digits, nine two. So the only two things I want to remind people, there's an, an, a survey, there's a QR code to just that information would be really fantastic. And I can't remember what the second thing <laughs> was. <laughs> then I'll, oh, yes. Your name's going to land somewhere, you know, that's before you leave the room. And um, at this point, I do want to welcome back Elder Joe Michael, um, who's going to give us a closing prayer to kind of close the ceremony that we've had for the last three days. So, Joe Mike, please. Hey, everybody. Hey, peace to everybody. Um, as I was over in the uh, reflections and questions, stuff like that, uh, they're very, it's coming from the heart, those questions. And, and I appreciate everybody's concern. And uh, we always gotta look for the future, but the future begins now. I don't know if that's an oxymoron question or not, but our future begins now. It's no different than planting a seed. In the future, you'll have the fruits of, of food or aqua, 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 the fish, the trees, or livestock. Think, think about our future of our children. Think about how we're going to sustain 
And once we build a relationship with nature and within ourselves, then our ancestors who we called upon the other day to come in, to give their wisdom, their knowledge, and how we establish what we are today. We give thanks for the technology through the universities, but we must not overlook the hard work of the farmers, the gardeners, or anybody that has the knowledge within the earth. Mother Earth will always look after you. If you disrespect Mother Earth with the toxic oils, garbage, or anything, you gotta prevent it from being sour. It's no different than any vegetable that you leave too long. It will rot and won't taste good and you won't eat it. By paying respect to all things, organic, human, or any livestock. Those are, those are simple things that we, we endure in life. Those are my closing prayers. We take what we can. We take and we build a better relationship with each other in this room. We are a community right here now. When you go back to your area, your territories, the knowledge that you take, it'd be worthwhile. The more commitment that you make in a simple plan, the greater commitment you'll have and more freedom to enjoy the lovely fruits of your hard work. With that, those elders, your ancestors have told us in their time, the future we have to build. Even when they were back with the settlers and our ancestors migrated inland for the games. In spring, they went out to the water line for the fish. They only took what they needed and shared with everyone. And the knowledge that is there is being shared today. Those are the words of our ancestors, but those are your words too. You will repeat to your siblings. With that, I give thanks to the creator, all our ancestors, as we send them back to the spirit world. We give thanks to all the friends that we meet. We give thanks for their long life and happiness. We ask the creator put his gentle hand over everybody here. And not only here, but your family, your loved ones, for your safe journey. We ask the ancestors to go back to their spirit world now. As we leave in joyous of friendship, good fellowship, and all those people that worked hard even though it was a blink of an eye, two years went by, 2,000 years went by, 
400 years went by. It's a blink of an eye in our life. We give thanks. In working together, understanding different cultures, diverse groups, and learn new ways how to plant a simple potato or carrot. We all have knowledge, share that knowledge to each of us. But the education is most important and that is love. Scientifically proven, you talk to a plant, flower, it'll blossom. You get angry with it, it doesn't blossom. So it must be some truth with the spirit within anything. Well, Alan, Krutas of Na. How much by me and Anige? Kasala, huh? So, everybody, I thank you from my heart. I love everybody. And I'd say, journey, safe journey to your homes, to your loved ones. And, well, Alan, thank you very much. Hey.